Hello Hastings, welcome to another in-studio. I am Tom Wright and this guy beside me really doesn't need an introduction in Hastings. Mr. Jake Moore, the coaching legend um, here in Hastings, has been around 46 years, 46 years. And so, and this guy, uh, you probably have heard by now, has announced that he is retiring this year after 46 years. Uh, welcome to the studio, Jake. Thanks, thanks for having me, Tom. Yes, it's, it's an honor to have you here. I'm anxious to hear your story uh, and uh, reflect a little bit here and talk about your, and also talk about your decision. Um, so yes, uh, just to go back on your, your resume here, um, and correct me if I get any of this wrong here, but you started out in 1971 as a, a history teacher at, at the middle school, American history, eighth mm -hmm. grade. And then um, after 15 years, you switch, made the switch to a counselor for 19 years in the middle school in yep. the middle school and um, but also at back in, in 71 you started as a coaching the freshman basketball team mm -hmm. then and doing it all the way up to this year um, you've also coached football 36 years of football mm -hmm. in that time um, so uh, an umpire your umpire uh, 40 how many years 42 well, this years? will be my 42nd year I started in 1976 so wow yeah. wow so, um, busy guy, busy guy here, uh, well-known guy. Before go back and before we go on back to time here, Jake, let's talk about the decision. This is a big decision to to announce, um, to make. Um, tell us, was this something that was 46, kind of your magic number? You know, I'm, I'm gonna do it, or do you have a moment to like, you know what? I think I'm, I think I'm ready to walk away. It wasn't. Uh, I wasn't in the plans, it wasn't magic, I guess, if you look back, I was born in 1946, and this is my 46th year, but that didn't have anything to do with it. But um, I, I have a grandson who is a ninth grader, and I had hoped to coach against him at Stillwater this year, because I had coached his dad, and then I coached against his dad when his dad was the ninth grade coach at Stillwater Junior High. We played each other six times, and I thought this would kind of complete the whole circle if I could coach against my grandson. Well, he got moved up this year and there. He played uh, JV and he didn't play mm -hmm. ninth grade basketball. But the other thing, so one of the things that I want to watch him play, and I was uh -huh. missing his games because of the weekend tournaments and the practice and stuff like that. I want to go watch him, but I also have three granddaughters that are still participating. I've actually got four granddaughters, but one is uh, uh, done with volleyball at Stillwater. And the other three are, are just starting out in things. And so I want to be able to watch them. And I, I didn't want to miss, miss that. Um, and, and I already was missing things because of, because of the game, so oh. I felt this was at 46, so. 46. Yeah. Um, let's go back in time here. What, how did you get started in coaching in the first place? Um, I just started teaching that very first year, and uh, Mr. Ambertson was the athletic director. He was the athletic director when I was here. And uh, he called me in and asked me if I wanted to um, coach, first of all, eighth grade football. And I said, I'll do that. And, uh, and then he said, I would like you to coach ninth grade basketball too. So I just accepted that and because uh, I'd played those sports in high school. And, and uh, so I said, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And so um, here I am 46 here years you are 46. Been, you must yeah. have been doing something right to keep you around that long. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, what, um, let's go back in time a little bit more because your story in growing up, where did you grow up? I grew up in Hastings. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Been here my whole life, could never find the door to get out, which I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad. And um, I went to um, grade school at Guardian Angels, it, it was now C's, it was Guardian Angels and St. Bonham, so we had two Catholic schools, and it seemed like the Irish went to Guardian Angels and the Germans went to St. Boniface. Mm. Anyway, I went to Guardian Angels, went to high school here, played football, ran track, played basketball, and um, had a number of jobs in town. I, I worked with a guy by the name of Mike Gagan, and we delivered a milk door to door. I did that going into my seventh grade year. I worked for uh, Malloy Park Florist, Olaf Nielsen, uh, at the florist. And then uh, back in those days, when you turned 15, you could get your driver's license. So I'd, I was a ninth grader uh, delivering flowers for Olaf back then, oh, wow. setting up churches for weddings and things like that as a ninth grader. And um, then from there, I. Uh, I went to St. John, played, played football, like I said, football, basketball, and track, and then I went to, uh, I joined the National Guard and went active duty soon as I was out of high school. We, I went active duty for six months down in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, came back, worked at Bob's Music, which is a store downtown that sold 
records and TVs and, and uh, appliances and just worked there for about a month or so before school started. Then I went to St. John's, uh, went up there because I was going to major in business. I want to be in business and um, I didn't do so well in the business class. I didn't like them that much. I liked the history classes better. And so they finally called me in my junior year and they said, uh, you have to pick a major. And I, I said, what? Yeah, you got to pick a major. <laughs> I said, I said uh, okay, history. And they said, okay, and they put it down. And I thought, what am I going to do with history? And uh, so then I, I started thinking about being a teacher. So as soon as I graduated from St. John's, uh, I went to graduate school at River Falls. I had a master's program in history over there. And so I was going, going to school over there. And then I student taught back at Hastings in 1970 when Dean Tolifus was a junior and um, uh, Jerry Meyer. And um, so anyway, they offered me a job in the junior high. And I said, oh, no, I want to teach college. That's, I want to keep going and be a professor. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Dream big. Anyway, um, so uh, I said, I turned it down. I went back to school. And then I was, my part-time job was working at the beer stove. I was working at the beer stove one night. And a teacher by the name of John Hopkins came in and he said, hey, are you going to apply for Joe Novak's job? I said, what do you mean? Yeah, he's leaving pretty soon. Wendy Anderson had just become the governor of Minnesota. And Joe Novak was appointed state liquor, liquor commissioner for Minnesota. And he was leaving shortly. So I went home that night. I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go apply for Joe Novak's job, See, what, just ask about it. So I put a, a sport coat and tie and that stuff, and I went up to the middle school, and I walked in. Skip Linneman was the principal at that time, and I said, hi, I'm Jake Moore. I'd like to apply for Joe Novak's job. And he said, uh, oh, it's not me that you talk to. You talk to the assistant superintendent, and it's over by Todd Field, the school that I went to, uh -huh. graduated from, the one they tore down. Mm -hmm. So I drove over there. I think Skip called him when I was on the way and said, this is the guy you know, that we offered a job to last year, and we like him. So I walk in there. His name was H.G. Anderson. I shook hands. I used the same great line. Hi, I'm Jake Moore. I want to apply for Joe Novak's job. <laughs> and um, he said, well, we don't have time for an interview. We want you to start today. I said, start today? Today? <laughs> wow. I'm going to college. I said, I'm going to school. He says, you want to be a student or you want a job? I said, I'll take the job. <laughs> oh, wow. So they hired me then. And um, I went back to River Falls. I dropped out. I was in my last quarter over there. I, I finished later on, of course. But I dropped out, got 90% of my money back, came back to school, went to the junior high. Skip Lenneman took me down to the room. In fact, it was Joe Novak's very last day. And um, they were having a party for him. They had cupcakes and juice and that stuff. So um, Joe came out, gave me the book. He says, here are the three chapters you still got to cover because <laughs> it's March 10th, March 10th. And he gives me the book. He turned and walked right down the hall and he was gone. <laughs> that was it. That was it. So I walked in the classroom with Skip Linneman, the principal. He introduced me, um, and uh, you know, I, it, it was unbelievable. After I guess uh, you had I, a cupcake I even, and you started teaching. I huh? cupcake, <laughs> drank his juice and that stuff, and, and I could figure if I wasn't working the beer stube that night, if John Hopkins hadn't come in, if John Hopkins hadn't asked me that question, so it's kind of divinely orchestrated. Mm. I thought I think it was, it was meant to be, and then shortly after that. Uh, Hastings made it to the state tournament in hockey right away. It was the first time with Dean Talfus, Jerry Meyer, Ron Savage in goal. And um, they let everybody out of school because they were on TV. And so I went down to the beer stoop and because um, everybody was out of school. And, and uh, I, I thought, wow, this education, because then I watched Hastings on the on, on TV, uh -huh. and I thought, boy, this education is a great racket, I thought, <laughs> if you get a, get a free and, you know, get out during the day and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, from that, then I, I just continued on from there. So, wow, wow. Yeah. The, starting that day, that is, that yes. is an amazing story. <laughs> wow. And so, um, coming back, you know, you, and you started coaching, like we mentioned, you started coaching that right away as well. Mm -hmm. And um, tell us how that first year went in coaching. What, what and, surprised you about it, perhaps? Um, we only played 11 games, and um, we played 11 games that first year. The second year, there was we played 12 games, and then once the boosters got involved, we started playing more games, getting mm. into tournaments. But um, uh, I had uh, Tom Johnson, who just retired as athletic director. He was on my very first team. He was my star player. He averaged 24 points a game. Wow! And um, my very last game that we played here, Tom Johnson came back. And he said, Jake, he said, uh, I was at your first game. I thought I should be at your last game. Well, there was 46 years in between. So he, he came back to watch that last oh, game. Wow. So pretty cool. And the guys on that very first team uh, are turning 60 this year. And when I told my kids on the team this year, I, I told them that those guys are turning 60. They couldn't believe them. They wonder, <laughs> wonder how old I really am. Then. So, so. <laughs> 
But um, but getting back to what surprised me, um, you know, I, I didn't know that much about high school basketball. I played it, you know, but I played college football mm. in St. John's, and uh, it just uh, I, I had a slug of kids at first, and then uh, um, some dropped off, and uh, it, it was just fun working with them. Mm. I, I really enjoyed that, and uh, and pushing them hard too, and I've always done that, push the kids hard. Well, that brings up your qu the question: uh, What was your philosophy on coaching? What kind of coach did you try to be? Well, I tried to be myself, and what I really tried to do is number one. Um, I shouldn't say number one, but one thing would be to out condition the opponents. And so I knew the, ki the kids had to know coming in they were going to really have to work hard and uh, because it, they're going to have to do it all the way up. And so this was, I kind of looked at it as this was boot camp for them when they came in. So uh, I demanded, you know, discipline and um, a, a strong work ethic. I always pushed that, that uh, we can outwork the other team. Maybe we're not as good, but we can outwork them. And this is carried over to the, now when we're at this school. One of the advantages I had here at CNI is that we had our own gym, and I had it for two and a half hours. So I practiced two and a half hours. Other ninth grade teams that we practiced with only practiced an hour and a half. And one of the reasons is because they're limited with gym space. They had to maybe share it with the ninth grade girls team, but I had my own. So I sold the kids on, um, we're going to outwork them, mm -hmm. and we're going to get better. And, and they saw it themselves. Maybe early in the year, uh, there was a couple instances where we got beat by 16 points and we played a team later on at the end of the year. And one, one case, we beat them by 24. Another one this year, we lost by 16 and then beat them by eight at the end of the year. So they saw that the hard, hard work paid off. So, wow. um, and then at Christmas, most ninth grade uh, teams don't practice during Christmas. Well, I brought them in for three hour practices and we did it eight times. So there's an extra 24 hours so I could get all my stuff in that I need to get in and really kind of back up and start over again and go through all the fundamentals and, and uh, so that they really had it down. And then coming out of Christmas, that's kind of when the teams took off. And just as an example, this year we, we were five and seven at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. And then when we came out of, out of Christmas, we won 29 games in a row, which is unbelievable. I mean, we played really good teams. Uh, we played Mounds View and we played Wilmington Jefferson and East Ridge and East View and Egan, Mount, um, uh, let's see, uh, Champlin Park. And um, we just, it, it's it, incredible to be able to win 29 games in a row. And, and the, this team that I had this year won more games than any team I had ever coached. And they were shooting for that because we had, 33 was the mark. And I had a team back in 81, 82 that won 33 games. And so these guys knew that. And uh, I had a former player come back and talk to my guys and said, look, we've had this record long enough. We want you guys to break that record. And they did on that. Um, well, Ended up with 905 wins, but 34 on the last game of the season. They had to they had to win out, and they did so. Uh, Remarkable. Yeah, just wow. really, really great, great, great se storybook season. Really, Andy. I guess the other thing about it, I, it, it wasn't all hard work. I always mixed in a lot of humor too, uh -huh. and I had fun. I I got to know the kids really well. Tried to make them laugh during practice, during the games, and uh, so I I just want them to have a, a good. A good experience of ninth grade basketball, and uh, we we put in an awful lot of hours, and uh, so we had to. I wanted to enjoy it with them, and I wanted them to enjoy it too. And um, I think it pays off that after these kids gra graduate, like three years after they're done with ninth grade, uh, they invite me back to their grad parties mm -hmm. and, and tell me what a good time they had in ninth grade and and how much fun it was. So uh, that means a lot. Well, did it ever hit you this season? I that uh, you know this is it did you have a moment or is it did i didn't um and the reason why i didn't we were so focused on this win streak this 20 and that's that's what we kept focusing on and the other thing we focused on was the total number of wins the 34 wins and so that's what we were i was and they were too and um uh, that's what we wanted to get done so i and and then all of a sudden when it was done my last game um you know as the kids came out of the game um, they gave me big hugs, just hung on. I mean, it was really, uh, really touching how they all came out and gave me big hugs. And then at, at the end, um, I turned around and everybody was in, in the crowd. We had a good crowd. A lot of people came back who had never seen ninth grade basketball game, but they came back as my last game. And, and former teachers and whatever came back and, and former players. That was great. But they gave me a standing ovation. Mm. And that's where it kind of hit me. I mm. think that, that this was it and, and how, what a great, great ride it's been. Um, you know, I got to ask you about, uh, as we mentioned, you were a counselor for 19 years there. And I understand that you uh, had a tradition of going around and singing happy birthday to the students. 
Um, and I've heard a few people mention that, so it, it's definitely stuck with a lot of people. How did that come about? Um, I think uh, I went to the Renaissance Festival, and I just saw how they got people involved, and in, you know, at the Renaissance Festival, different acts yeah. there. And then um, some kid would, uh, in the eighth grade, said it's so and so's birthday. So I, I would really kind of ham it up and sing birthday. It wasn't a serious one, but then as the years went on, I, I, I could only sing in my own classroom. I couldn't get out around the school. Mm -hmm. But when I became a counselor, um, then uh, kids would come down and say, "Can you come to so and so's room fourth hour and sing to whoever? Can you come to third hour?" And I mean, I sang just about every single day. And some days I sang two times, and sometimes three times a day. But I kept building it and made it bigger and bigger. I, the kids would, I'd come in with a fake nose and the glasses and the mustache and the eyebrows, and, and I'd put them on. I said, first of all, are you embarrassed? And, yeah, I'm embarrassed. Like, yeah, put this on. <laughs> and um, I said, does anybody know who that is? No. They'd all go, no. They are all trained. I, I, I'd done it so many times. And I'd put a hat on, and then they held a sign that said, happy birthday on it. And I had a hammer that made a noise, and I had a magic wand. So I'd sing to them, and then I'd have them blow out the candles, and somebody else would be at the lights. So I'd go, one, two, three, and go, and I'd hit the lights, <laughs> and the lights would go out. And I said, well, we can't go on like this. We've got to bring it back on. So I'll go, I said, no, we, I need you to take that magic wand and go, what I get to that. So I'll go, I'll go backwards, three, two, one. And then all the kids would give a dump, drum roll while we were uh -huh. doing that, and they go, and then the lights would come back on. So oh, wow. I, it, it, and, I would uh, I'd get done singing. I said, "There, are you glad it's over?" And they would say, "Yep." And I said, and I hit that hammer, and go, Ksh! wrong. It's not because for special people, there's a special person. Then I'd sing really loud, and, <laughs> and um, it, it would take it would take about five minutes, really. To, <laughs> That's quite to a show. It sounds like it would take five but, minutes. <laughs> and if I didn't get there, you know, you know, parents would come in. I'd have to talk to them, and the and I was supposed to be someplace third hour to sing, but I was you know doing my job, mm -hmm. and. Um, the bell would ring, and these girls would come down and say, where were you? And where were you? How come you didn't come? And I said, you know, girls, I do have a job here. I said, <laughs> they didn't just hire me to sing. I had, <laughs> I had to deal with what was going on in the counseling office. So then I would try to come back, you know, the next day and, and sing happy belated birthday. Or someone would say, uh, you can't get me. I'm there in the summer. So then I'd pick a day and go in and sing happy premature birthday to them. And uh, Mike Loudon was the baseball coach here. And I taught across the hall, and he had a, one girl came up to him and said, um, oh, please, Mr. Loudon, please, don't tell Mr. Moore that my, tomorrow's my birthday. Please don't. <laughs> well, of course, he told me I came in well, there, you know. So, that's yeah. asking they're, for they're it. They're asking for it, yeah. Uh, and then I, I'd have grandparents call me on the phone and ask me to go in and sing to their kids, too. So uh, it was, then my very last one, was it was in the paper. And if you go in the beer stoop above the, the ladies' restroom, there's a, uh, a cutout of that page, and in, in the, the title says, One for the Road. Yeah. And I'm singing to this little Reese girl. She was a sixth grader, and they came and covered it by, in the paper. Oh, and took cool. a picture and that stuff, yeah. Oh, wow. But I run into people there, and they you still sing Happy Birthday? <laughs> I mean, and these people are in their 30s. And I said, no, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps there could be a job in your retirement, you hey, know, a little yeah. extra cash. You could come in. <laughs> or at the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, what are you going to miss the most? Oh, the kids, without a doubt. Yeah. Seeing them come up, you know, I had maybe had their older brothers, and then they would come in. I, it's definitely going to be the kids, because um, uh, I just like one thing. Terry Hartman told me when I retired from teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry Hartman said, when you come over to the high school in a few years, he says you're not going to know anybody. And so as the years pass, because I come in the high school, hey, Mr. Moore, Mr. Moore, and then it got less and less, and bingo, all of a sudden he's right. I didn't know anybody. I only knew my players. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, that, that's going to happen again here, too. When I walk in, I'm just going to look at these faces, and they're, they're going to look at me, and they ain't going to know who the heck I am. You know? So I'm going to miss, miss um, just doing stuff with them and, and uh, enjoying their company and, and watching them uh, get better, because that's one of the biggest hmm. things. I think uh, at the end of the year when I have... I see how much they improve, how much after we lost to a team, we win, uh, beat them later on, and when the, the season's over, parents coming up to me and saying, wow, they really improved. I mean, that, that means that. So I'm going to miss the development mm. of, of those players, but their personalities, and I, I just, I don't know, I, my humor blends in well with ninth graders, I guess. And <laughs> they think I'm funny, and uh, I, have a, I have a good time with them. I really do. So that's what I'm going to miss the most, really, uh, the, the kids. Yeah. What's next for you? What are you gonna? What are gonna be? What are you gonna fill that all that spare time with now? Yeah, well, I am gonna go watch Stillwater play because my grandson will be on the varsity next year, so I'll go watch him. 
Uh, I have a granddaughter, one granddaughter plays soccer and volleyball. I have another one that's in hockey and another one in gymnastics. So um, I missed a lot of other things. So yeah. that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue during the summer. I, I, I coach about 150 softball games a summer. I've been doing that for 42 years. And um, and then I work two days a week at uh, Vermillion State Bank. And I know 85% of the people that come in the door, it's just great that, well, you know, former former players of mine and, yeah, and students or people I grew up with because I've been here my whole life. Oh. Yeah. Well, great. Well, it sounds like it's not going to be uh, too hard to fill up your schedule. Yeah, I, I, I'll stay busy. <laughs> You'll stay busy, huh? Well, Jake, thank you very much yeah. for coming in and sharing your story. And thank you for all that you've done for Hastings. And I know you've got many, many, many fans out there are watching this and uh, appreciative of all your time and effort um, and shaping many lives, well, I, I'm sure. Well, thanks for having me on. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. I, I love the teaching part, the counseling part. and and the coaching part and the people I've met and, and I'll know them for, you know, forever and keep them close to my heart. So appreciate it. There we go. Mr. Jake Moore, uh, retiring after 46 years here in Hastings. Thank you for joining us in this in studio. We'll see you next time.